watching a, a lunch lunch around the world and it was mm -hmm. like we didn't eat that thank god we didn't we was mm. eating some crawfish etouffee for lunch gumbo we was eating jambalaya like we was eating the foods of our state yeah i don't know what they eat now but What's good, y'all? It's the Doom React, and, and we're, we're back, back with another, another video. video. Who we got today, see? Today, we're back with another American reaction. This yes. is going to be a good video. Lord. You guys have been wanting to learn more about our culture, so in honor of Black History Month, we're showing y'all a little bit more, more about our culture yes. and our Louisiana culture. Mm, All mm, right? Mm, mm. So we're super excited about this video, guys. If you're new to us and, and we're new to you, you Make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that, that subscribe, subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on the road to 100K. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Put the size on these paws. That's right. That looks wow, great. that is beautiful. Yes, yeah, right. Your tooth on a crab claw? Hell no, I ain't got no teeth. <laughs> 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 Put the size on these paws. Yeah, that looks wow, great. Wow, that is beautiful. You ever break your tooth on a crab claw? Hell no, I ain't got no teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it ain't my purse. She said her teeth in her purse. Like I said, New Orleans Creole filet gumbo have ham, shrimp, smoked sauces, and chicken. Yeah, so everybody be like, where should we visit if we go to Louisiana? Yes. Like, around your neck of the woods. Here you go. Yes, New Orleans, Lafayette, um, Shreveport. I think if you hit those three spots in Louisiana, you'll get a good sense of the culture. Lake Charles, too. Yeah, you'll leave you'll, A little bit. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. You'll leave it a tight tummy, <laughs> as they say. Ooh, Are you right. the gumbo queen? Is this Yes, true? I am. <laughs> Absolutely. It's taking me... Our U.S. Deep South food tour started with a bang. Unearthing the most unique Cajun cuisine in Louisiana. How do you know if it's done? Now y'all about to see why we always talk about crawfish. Like, look. Our children start eating crawfish at six months and mm -hmm. younger sometimes. <laughs> we put we put crayfish season in their bottle and mix it with some juice. No, we don't. No, we don't. No, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, yeah, man, brother! Now we're headed to Louisiana's <laughs> epicenter of young. Mm. New Orleans. And, and, and let me tell y'all something. That's not a, they're not over exaggerating when you see them doing all that kicking and moving mm -hmm. around after they eat. We really do. They that. really cut up like that. We really do that. Food be jumping. But I'm gonna have to give them an A plus for trying to say it correctly and not saying New Orleans oh, or uh, New Orleans. Yeah, I don't think I don't think you're supposed to pronounce every. No, no it's New Orleans. Baby. New Orleans. New Orleans. Yeah, like that. <laughs> And the French Quarter are missing out on the wealth of different cultures that have come together in New Orleans. The stories behind the people, the language, the accents, all of that comes through in food. Food around here, it isn't French, it isn't African, it isn't German. It's Creole, and it's dang good, too. This is the key to making it have that Creole filet taste. That looks, it that. looks incredible. It looks really good. It probably is. A blend of cultural influences combined with local resources forming some of the most unique food you will ever try. What am I supposed to do with this? Well, you know, my mission today, thing. experience the heart of Creole cooking in New Orleans. Oh my lord. Oh lordy. Does this have gluten? So prepare to get jacked. His, We're taking on the... Does his language like, barrier change? <laughs> he say, oh lord, oh lord. <laughs> um, so yes, if you want to learn how to cook some of our foods, not just in New Orleans, I know how to cook everything. But um, yes, we have a family channel, Life With Them. Go check Let's it out. Subscribe. We're going to post some more soon. Louisiana's best in the Big Easy. Yeah! Welcome to Cafe Dumont. 
It, uh, doesn't look like a cafe exactly. The original Café Dumont was established in 1862. Now they've got eight locations, including this food truck, pumping out New Orleans' famous deep-fried, finger-burning beignets. What's special about the food truck? We thought of the idea whenever people were calling for some private events and weddings so that we could be yeah. just on-the-go beignets. I would like to make it part of my ceremony, if it's me. <laughs> I'm told this should be your first stop in New Orleans if you want to get your hands on the city's best beignets. But, uh, what is a beignet? Right. It's a French pastry. It's with a hollow on the inside, crunchy on the outside, put a little bit of powdered sugar on top. Is it stuck with the essence of New Orleans? <laughs> yeah, I guess you could say that, yeah. They've got this simple recipe down to an art form. Flatten the dough made from a mix of flour, baking powder, kosher salt, eggs, granulated sugar, melted butter, and vanilla extract. Cut it into squares and deep fry it in hot oil. Once it turns golden brown, drain it and dust it with a mountain of powdered sugar. How many of these do you think you sling out in a day? For the food truck, we bring about six doughs a day, and each bus pan of dough makes about 200 orders of beignets. Why are you giving me a SAT math problem? <laughs> well, oh, really okay, six think, yeah. times 200, so 1,200 a day? 1,200, I guess it's a rough estimate. Okay, cool. <laughs> Now normally, people don't eat in the food truck, but I thought it would look really cool. It's cool, right? So here we go, it's super hot. It looks big, but it's hollow inside. But honestly, it's heavy as well. Oh, and it's burning my hands a little bit. Wow, it really, the texture, kind of like a donut, which um, might not surprise you. Oh, it's hot. Oh my God, pleasure and pain. It looks like, um. Who's a drug lord? Who's something with Scarface. cocaine? <laughs> looks like uh, it looks like Scarface. Something with Scarface and cocaine. You guys make your own punchline. There's the <laughs> there's all the elements. You figure it out. Oh God, it's just cascading. You can't even keep the sugar on there. It wants to leave. It's flowing down like an avalanche. Big part of this, you cannot exhale while biting because all the sugar will go everywhere. Don't breathe. Super dense, heavy, kind of doughy. You can see the hollow sections inside and then just a super sweet, fluffy powdered sugar on top. Oh, does this have gluten? No, it's not gluten-free. Oh, <laughs> now now I know face. how you guys feel when y'all see us react to y'all famous dishes. Yeah. Because watching him eat this is making me, like, real happy. Real hungry, too. Ain't hungry. Fair, <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, we about to go eat this with the kids. Like, we'll make it tonight. Yes. Um, This reminds me of... We were watching something with Nigeria. Yeah, yeah, I, I know remember. what you're talking about. Yeah. And I think Nigeria, they has have these round dough things. Mm -hmm. I forgot what it's called, but y'all don't it's put called, powdered sugar on it. It's called a few things. Oh, yeah, it's, it's called... It's called a few things in Nigeria. It's called something um, in Ghana, too. In Ghana, too, as well, yeah. I think it's Puff Puff or something like that. Yeah, so this is like, when we saw that, we was like, oh, we have that. Yeah. Yeah, but of course we get this from the French, because yeah. Louisiana... The French. <laughs> the French. Oh, shit. Joey Hayes is one of those places. It's lots of locals. It's lots of regulars. It explores a little bit of um, another adaptation of Creole that is a little bit different than what people expect when they come to New Orleans, usually. Like the people of New Orleans, Creole food is a blend of cultures, including Italian, Spanish, African, German, Caribbean, Native American, yep. and Portuguese. The result, a distinct culinary identity, an identity captured here on the menu at Joey K's. I am in the kitchen with Jay. Thank you for joining me today. Yes, sir. Did you, you volunteer or you have to because you're an employee here? You're forced to? <laughs> you have no choice? Forced to. Okay, great. Uh -huh. Today, Jay is showing me how Joey K's makes an eggplant Napoleon. Now, you might be thinking, eggplant? Uh, it's a vegetable. Why do I care about vegetables? Because we fried the f out of it, right? Yes. yes it hardly even looks like a vegetable anymore. How would you generally describe the food here? Comfort. Comfort food. Super makes you feel yeah, good. Yeah, okay, I like that. <laughs> this is like a your girlfriend breaks up with you, you thought everything was going fine, and she's like, I just saw you as a friend the whole time. Then you come here and you eat your emotions, right? Because she's not cooking for you. It's oh. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> It's either not cooking or if you're having a bad time, just take it here and then y'all mm -hmm. can just feed both your emotions. Yeah. Now, this is what I absolutely love about this show. Mm -hmm. He don't just show one side of anywhere he goes. Yeah. 
I'm from New Orleans. I've never been to this restaurant. I I don't know what they're about to... I, I've eaten a Napoleon, but I don't know what they're about to make. So I'm intrigued to see what they're going to come up with. And he's saying New Orleans has all of the different cultures or whatever. That's not just New Orleans. That's everywhere in Louisiana. That's everywhere. Real talk. That's even in the schools coming up. Yes. Like, when we were watching a, a lunch lunch around the world, and it was mm -hmm. like, we didn't eat that. Thank God we didn't. We was mm. eating some crawfish etouffee for lunch, gumbo. We was eating jambalaya. Like, we was eating the foods of our state. Yeah. I don't know what they eat now, but we was eating good. <laughs> See this eggplant? It's way too raw and healthy looking. We need to toss it in some flour, batter, Italian breadcrumbs, and deep fry until it's cooked through. Right now we're gonna take these eggplant and start building a tower with them. Stack shrimp in between each layer, building our tower. That looks incredible. Now to bring it all together, the crawfish sauce. Start with heavy whipping cream, add in New Orleans Ooh, crab boil, and that Joey K seasoning. Once this reduces mm. down, the best part, a pile of crawfish tails. I went crawfishing yesterday. Nice, huh? You like it? It's, um... <laughs> it's great. <laughs> oh, wow. That looks incredible. You know at seasoned restaurants when the skillets are just, you beat the shit out of them. Oh, yeah. A lot of people have been fed out of this skillet. Yes. He did that. Now here's what I've noticed and what I really like about food so far in the South, and I hope this is a pattern that repeats itself across every other place we go Man, to, is like they do it. vegetables, but you know, they fry it up a bit. Yeah. They do something extra to it to make it extra and palatable. What I learned in etiquette class as a child is always work your way from left to right and start with the balls. Remember beignets? Oh my God, pleasure and pain. Well, these are savory beignet balls, fried flour and cornmeal stuffed with corn and crab meat but still topped with powdered sugar. I'm gonna put it in this sauce. Oh, that's nice. It's a little gooey and doughy on the inside. Nice tangy sauce. It's like a hush puppy, but good. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, hush puppies are super overrated. Next, red beans and Ooh, rice, a dish most good. popular on Mondays. But why is it a Monday dish? Can you tell me a little bit more about the history? Do you know? I can tell you about my history for yeah. us. Yes. That's Perfect. all my grandmother did on Mondays. Really? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yes. We started a week off after, like, you know, grandma's to cook a good Sunday dinner on Sundays after church and stuff, but mm. we we'll always start off Monday with some red beans. Yep. Here at Joey K's, there are real bits of sausage in the bean sauce and a full split sausage on top to fulfill your meaty desires. I haven't cooked it like that. Mm. No, I was That's good. Cutting. All that delicious I like how, I like how that look. But I you know what? That's a restaurant. So they have, to, they have the presentation. How you said? Presentation yeah. is key. We, I, but next time I cook it, I'm definitely cook, I'm going to post it on our Instagram. <laughs> Y'all going to see it like that. Yeah, because like look, look how they have the rice in the middle. Mm -hmm. It's just the presentation of Some it. Some other places, um, they actually put the 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 the, the, the beans first and then mm -hmm. they'll put the rice right on top mm -hmm. and then you gotta just go ahead and mix it in that way but yeah. this is another way you can do it yeah definitely i remember those mondays of red beans we don't really do that too much we get tired of eating beans every week no nah, but, uh, but them, they be good but yeah my my good. childhood even the schools would do it the big old silver pots of red beans oh yeah, yeah. even the schools would do it they should have shown mm. down on that last video oh yeah going to the school we had good red beans in school too yeah smokiness from the sausage is breaking off and permeating this bean gravy. But well, what about this? That's how you cook a red bean. Ooh, he going in. He cutting up. Oh, my Lord. That's incredible. Boom. Signature dish right here. We've got gravy. We've got shrimpies. I'm going to start with the shrimp. That's the dish. I know that. Oh, that's, that's like a seafoody yeah. explosion. I copy that. Mm -hmm. That recipe. Yeah, and that eggplant kind of brings it home, gives it some balance. Here, that's a crawfish tail. So somebody patiently for hours is painstakingly <laughs> taking the meat out of each little crawfish <laughs> tail. We have to watch it do this. Mm, so much seafood, so creamy, so thick, so rich. It's the taste of New Orleans. I don't think you uh, count how many tails you can crack open when you eat cra nah, uh, crawfish. Nah, you just eat. You they just pop, eat. pop, pop, just going back and forth at it. So I don't think... You're getting hungry talking about it. Yeah. To round out my New Orleans Creole experience, I'm headed to Lil Dizzy's Cafe. 
started in 1940 and run by owner Wayne Baquet, who learned the restaurant trade from his father, Eddie. What did you learn from your father that's something that you still use today? Consistency. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Make sure you do everything from scratch. That's Be consistent all the time. Make yeah. sure the gumbo tastes the same. Mm -hmm. Make sure the fried chicken tastes the same all the time. Mm. You heard what he said, mm. how he slipped it in there. Make sure you do everything from scratch. Yeah. That's us. No we lie. cook everything from scratch. Now, there's some things like we'll, you know, I'm trying to think what we'll, we'll do. I don't know. I mean, it but depends. But all of our gravies, we yeah. do from scratch. Like our gumbo. Our paste. Everything from scratch. Thanks. Time, the bread pudding, mm -hmm. everything. Lil Dizzy's Creole Soul Lunch Buffet is famous for its fried chicken and gumbo. Gumbo combines the culinary influences from France, Spain, native tribes, and Africa, as well as Italy and Germany. And at Dizzy's, it also involves the influence of the gumbo queen herself, Rosalind. I'm a little concerned you didn't follow any uh, recipe book. Where's your recipe book? <laughs> oh, it's in there. I'm so used to cooking gumbo at least 40 years. Yeah. Until I just do it with my eyes closed. Mm. I feel it. I feel like the... Um... I have to say mm. this. If you are like uh, anybody, mainly women, if you're from Louisiana, cooking gumbo is like a rite of passage for us. Like, seriously. Like, that's when you grown, grown. Right. I think that's okay. that conversation we always have, like, around a certain time of the year. We'd be like, you got that gumbo on the, on the stove? Mm -hmm. They'd be like, you know, we got some gumbo cooking. Yeah, like in my family, I think your family as well. Like, Christmas, gumbo is what we cook. I just got the phone my little brother. He just had a big pot of gumbo. Yeah. 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 amount of seasoning I can put in there, the amount of roux, even the trinity. Do you give it a little that? taste, or do you just see it? I can't taste my food. I let someone else taste it. Okay, I'll do that for you. That's why I'm so small. Okay. <laughs> Roslyn starts her gumbo by adding the Trinity. The no, Trinity is the base for much the of the cooking in the regional cuisines of Louisiana. I have um, onions in here, bell peppers, parsley, garlic, celery, definitely celery. So it's a Trinity but with some bonus items. Exactly. Okay, got exactly. it. <laughs> Next, the seasoning. Salt, pepper, onion, and garlic powder. Bay leaves, a pile of parsley. Then she adds her own Rosalind style twist. Some people put their gumbo crabs last, but I put mine in first because it gives us a better flavor. Look at the size on these paws. Yeah, that looks wow, great. Wow, that is beautiful. You ever break your tooth on a crab claw? Hell no, I ain't got no teeth. Uh-uh! Oh, that shit was on camera. I mean, it in my purse. <laughs> Rosalind adds in Lil Dizzy's special roux, a cap of Zataran crab boil, chicken powder, and then the glorious meat. Oh, there's more meat? Yeah, of course. What? This is smoked sauce. You cut them up to little pieces. Hmm. You take your ham, and you cut that up to small pieces. This ham and the sausage, what is that, from New York City? It's from New Orleans. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Here's the hot sauce. I take my little hot sauce and ruin them in little bowls. Oh, I like little Look bowls. Look at that. <laughs> So it's already bubbling up, throwing in the chicken. This is a, a parade of meats in exactly. this gumbo. We exactly. brought together ocean animals, winged animals, pig animals. It's really about togetherness. So from You know what? I'm surprised he didn't go to Dookie Chase. Because everybody, <clears throat> like if they're doing a restaurant video, a gumbo, they always go to Dookie Chase. Dookie Chase is like a historic restaurant in New Orleans. And it's, I'm looking at her making this gumbo, and I don't know if it's she making it like this because it's the restaurant, you know, mm -hmm. just to be quick with it. But it's interesting to see people make gumbo in different ways, and they always come out like if it's from, if it's from Louisiana. Yeah. It come out the way it should come out. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a math problem. There's so many ways you can get the same answer. So I feel like, you know, everybody grow up a way where they get taught how to make their gumbos mm -hmm. and stuff. So I, we've seen yeah. gumbos get made. This is another yes. unique way. Here, what do we do next? Let the gumbo simmer down. And the last thing, you wait about 20 minutes. Then you put your shrimp. Oh, there's more meat? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. You're supposed That's to have incredible. Shrimp, man. I represent third generation in the restaurant business in the wall. Wayne is responsible for all we see today, from keeping the chicken perfect to satisfying each dinner guest, running his restaurant with a certain quiet, focused determination. So we're known for Creole soul food. The buffet overall, which always have fried chicken, 
and always have gumbo. And then we build around that and always have bread pudding. To you, what is Creole? To me, Creole is what I am, mm -hmm. a product of New Orleans, which is a mixture of African, French, Spanish, and Indian. Mm -hmm. and, and the food that we created from gumbo of people that we have, uh -huh. this is what comes out of this, the kitchen. So we're putting in a load of shrimp, and those are just gonna cook in there now too? Yes, indeed. When the gumbo is done, the last thing is very important, sassafras. Oh, I thought you were gonna say eating it. <laughs> this is the key to making it have that Creole filet taste. It has kind of a earthy smell to it. Exactly. That Look looks, it that. looks incredible. It looks really good. It probably is. <laughs> Daddy filling them plates up. We've got a lot here. We're gonna build up to the gumbo. But first, mac and cheese. Now here they've gone with kind of a wide elbow variety of noodle, and it seems almost like they've used real cheese, and that's what I like about it. Mm. Oh my god, it's got like real chunks of cheese. I am not used to this. I'm used to craft macaroni and cheese made with chemical cheese. Oh, they put actual cheese. It tastes like even some ricotta. Yeah. Oh. I'm gonna circle back to that later. But for now, chicken. This is their other signature dish. They dip the raw chicken in an egg wash, dredge it in seasoned flour, and drop it in hot oil. Next time you take off your girlfriend, forget the flowers and buy her a bucket of this. <laughs> it's so crunchy on the outside. I'm just gonna start stripping off pieces and putting them in my mouth. That's real nice. It's so different from something like AFC, if you were to compare it to that, because it has that homemade quality to it. It's very gentle. It's not over-salted or over-seasoned. Come and take a look. The chicken looks wonderful. Beautifully oh, fried. Balanced. Here they are famous for the chicken, and I can see why. Oh, Lord, trust me, I saw this sitting inside about 20 gallons of oil, but it doesn't feel heavy. The real reason we are here, the gumbo. Are you guys looking at it? The sweet lady put some rice on it, and I was like, is that a normal thing to do? Is that what I should be doing? She said, absolutely, baby. And I was like, oh my god, thank you. People are so sweet down here, I love it. I'm gonna take a big bite of this. We got a little bit of everything, some shrimp, some sausage. Oh my god, really deep, smoky flavor to it. Oh, it's a kind of savory. It's like when you put your shirt in the dryer and then you put your shirt on. What? If that was a flavor, oh, that's how yeah. it feels on the Comfort inside. Food. You know yeah. that feeling? Boom, crap. Again, I'm always stuck here. What do I do? Sir, I from this nice. point, do I take the meat out of here? Yeah, you, you break it off. Break it off. Okay, and then you squeeze it in. Suck on it to get the juice out. <laughs> Oh, the broth has kind of permeated and sat inside with the crab, creating like its own unique kind of crabby broth inside of each part. He left some meat in that crab. Conclusion, real good. It's quite a treat to see what goes into this being made. They found a way to like make it incredible and incredibly fast. And honestly, it still has that incredible homemade flavor. Gumbo is supposed to have that homemade taste, mm -hmm. right? It's supposed to taste like home when you eat it, yes. you feel me? So yes. anytime you ever have a bowl of gumbo and you don't feel like you're at home when mm -hmm. you're sitting out eating it, I, you need that feeling. You, you know, that now, feeling. now some restaurants in New Orleans give, give our gumbo a bad rep in New Orleans. That's mm -hmm. why I think people who are from Louisiana, who's not from New Orleans, they will prefer gumbo outside of New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Unless, like, this is like a homegrown restaurant. Th three generations. Yeah, my man, three Unless generations. Unless you go there. Mm -hmm. Because when, when you get to, like, the restaurant, like, upscale restaurants in New Orleans, they mess up our gumbo. I think they just try to, like... And I'm saying that as a person who's from there. And, and he was in my, in my, the neighborhood I grew up in. Yeah. Treme. So, um, yeah, I just, me personally... I can't eat a gumbo from a restaurant in New Orleans. I'll go to like, like that restaurant. Yeah, yeah. I like that uh, authentic. Mm -mm. I like that authentic style gumbo. Yeah. We have different gumbos. I've seen one lady. She was making a squirrel gumbo, and I've like never heard of that. Lady. Yeah. So see, see. they got different. They got different ways they yeah. do it. People hear of gumbo and they be like, mm -hmm. okay, I want to put my own twist to it, and they do their thing. Fire, boom. Mm -hmm. But I like that uh, authentic style. Yeah. And I also wonder. I didn't see her put okra in her gumbo. You know, okra, I mean, gumbo means okra. And a lot of people, like, 
when they when they don't see okra in the gumbo, it's like, oh, it's not authentic gumbo. Some people don't like okra. I, I don't like okra in the gumbo. I've had okra gumbo. I don't it's like pretty it. good. Hey, drop in the comment I, section if you guys ate slime. a nice, good bowl of gumbo, <laughs> man. And where you get it from? Yeah. Three historic yeah. establishments, and still, we have not even scratched the surface of what this city has to offer. If New Orleans was a meal, I'd consider this the appetizer, and I plan on coming back for the main course. From researching and shooting to yeah. editing and mass. Well, that's who's a little bit of our culture. We are going to be digging more and more into the culture of, you know, us. I like I like what he said though. If New Orleans was the main course. Still, uh, he said something like that. I, mm -hmm. I'm gonna probably mess it up, but he's he that felt like that was the appetizer. And, and believe me, if he felt like that mm -hmm. was the appetizer, he he in for like a long ride because they got some good stuff about New Orleans. Yes, yes. And as a person who is from there, mm -hmm. don't let New Orleans be the only place that you go to experience food. I gotta give Dion his little props for his little city, huh? But Lafayette has a lot of good food. <laughs> Come on, man. So I'm ready for him to get into the Boudin, the Crackling, yeah, the Poor Boy, yes, sir. the Etouffee, the Jumbo. Yes. I'm, ready. I'm ready for that. I'm Jumbo ready. Lies, Turkey Neck, all that, bro. Yeah. So we hope you guys enjoyed this video with us. Like this video, subscribe, turn on the post notification bell. We have enabled our super, super thanks. thanks if you like to support the channel that way. As well as our join feature to become a VIP member of the channel. Send in your reaction requests through our description box below. We'll see you soon. Peace.